Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another educational commentary. For those of you guys new here, basically what I do is I commentate everything that I'm doing and thinking about across all the champions I play on this channel so you can see the consistencies across how I think and play and apply it to yourself. Stick so to the plan today now. we are Minions playing in uh, Emerald! Emerald 4, Emerald 1. And we are playing Quinn who has a, I have all the receipts, 57, 56% win rate, 57 look better for the thumbnail. Sorry if you got baited. Uh, we are running Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Absolute, and Gathering Storm. No easy and we are going to be building Profane Hydra and Opportunity into those new boots that we keep seeing. So let's jump into the action. We are against an Aatrox top lane. Let's get the juice rolling. So we're going to start off with a leash. You shouldn't leash in my opinion, but screw it. I like to leash and then flex Sometimes that I can also kill my opponents up. at the same time. So when we get to lane here, we're going to auto, E auto, and now proc electrocute immediately. We're not going to jump directly into him. We're going to strategically jump into him here in a second. Wait for it. So auto, E, auto, electrocute. The auto counts as one, the E counts as second, and then the auto after the E counts as the third thing to proc electrocute. Auto right here, another auto go into the bush to reset minion aggression. Something a lot of ranged top laners don't do for some reason. Right here, we're gonna level two cheese him. Ah, I can't reach him, unlucky. Flush him out. Okay, we're gonna fake zone him, see if we can maybe bait out his QE by staying just slightly outside of its range. Right there, Q? Yep, good angle. Beautiful. I see he was going for that minion, so I popped the Q in. Q2 plus E? If he Q2 plus E, he messes up. Nope. You have to bait these abilities out if you see an angle to kind of walk forward, but just still be outside of the range. That's one of the things that I coach people on when they get coaching from me, is zone of influence. Understanding how to use that concept to your advantage in the laning phase. Oh my god, I haven't done one of these in so long, I sound like a nerd. It's zone of influence, dude. <laughs> you hold the zones to dodge people's abilities. Tell me, Eddie. Okay, anyways. I just ignited him. Ah, uh, I could have flashed there, I know, but I didn't want to. What do you see up there? Maybe I egg flash you here. Worth. So worth. So worth. And he loses a majority of the wave. Okay. Perfect. Symbiotic boots, ladies and gentlemen. This item, for those of you who don't know what it does, is basically, when you buy it, you have to travel a certain amount of units, and it transforms into this boot. And it gives you empowered recall. So you get to recall fast, as if you have Baron 24-7, and run around the map. That is why it's so OP. And as you can see, the number is ticking up. But that's the power of Quinn. Uh, you basically stack three waves, where you only last at wave one and two. Wave three, you start hard shoving it. And then when you crash, a you should have got your opponent low already to tower dive them, potentially. In this case, he kind of took a bad trade where he was level 2 and I was level 3. And then we were able to do all that shenanigans and run him down. So right now when you come back, don't play aggressive. Play passive. When the wave's bouncing back towards you and there's a big wave. So as you can see, look at my passive positioning. Very far back, nothing crazy. I'm going to contest this cannon for sure. Walk forward to dodge the Q2 knockup. That was very slick for those of you who play against Aatrox. It's a little trick that you can do where basically you walk forward because he is going to likely shoot his abilities um, plus E, which means it'll push his abilities, his sweet spot forward of his Qs. And that allows you to dodge the sweet spot, which is it's big damage and the CC portion. So instead, you only take light damage. Okay. Now that the wave is bouncing back towards Aatrox, we are now going to play aggressive. Also, keep moving when you have these boots, by the way. Keep moving, keep moving. I forgot. I never buy these boots, that's why, because I don't play Quinn. I play Vein Top. I know, I know, Vein Top. Okay, we're going to play aggressive when he goes for these minions here. You have to find a good angle. Can't just go in. Get these last hits in. Now we have the bigger wave. Fine. I don't see a good angle, so I'll play the gank mid maybe. Teemo jungle, that's fine. That was bad CSing. Just like hunting fresher geese. 
I don't want to do anything with Aatrox here. So I just charge hard shot the wave. Uh, let's see. Pop a ward here. Still hard, steady aim. That's not good. You Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I kind of ran it down there, but it's okay. It's still going in the YouTube video. <laughs> you can't only post the times you play well. But that was hilarious. Anyways, we're back on the map. We're six. This is where we look for angles on people. So Aatrox is shoving a top wave into me. The question is, is do I want to make one play mid for the Syndra? Or run straight top and catch the wave? I'm down to look for something. We'll see if there's an angle here. Yep, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Taking your CS2, because that deserve it. And now we run back top lane. But that's, in, that's the name of the game for Quinn. A lot of times you can sacrifice CS top and literally just run around the map. In that case, we ran mid lane because they have an inting echo named Nemesis 6969 and take advantage. So, a lot of people would likely hard shove the wave here, which is a play. But we are going to hard shove in a way where we're waiting for the next wave that's coming. So I'm not going to hard shove, I'm going to wait for this wave right here. Take a second to pop a ward. I know there's a ward there, but fuck it. And then now we're going to hard shove here. We're going to hard shove the wave with a two wave crash instead of a one wave crash. And then rotate mid lane again. So now as you can see, we have two waves worth of minions that Aatrox has to deal with. And then run mid lane again. And it doesn't matter if Aatrox pings MIA. You literally just run mid anyways. No, Teemo's not in your jungle. He left. No easy prey. So yeah, Aatrox is spamming MIA right now, but it, again, literally does not matter. This is like Quinn is so OP. Anyways, I'm basing. <laughs> I took all his CS, that's why he's, that's why he's bad, but it's okay. Okay. So, let's grab some items here. Maybe throw in a little pink ward. And back on the map we go. Damn, what is going on bot lane? Stay and as you can alert. see, Aatrox is only starting to begin to bounce back towards me. So, I managed to push top. I did a two-wave crash. Rotated mid. Killed. Based, came back, and there's a nice juicy wave waiting for me on a silver platter. So, first and last hit here, play passive. As you always play passive when they have the bigger wave, generally speaking, you play passive. If you're obviously really far ahead, which I don't think I am, where I can just run them down through the wave, uh, then yeah, you have to play passive. That's a trade angle right there. More, more trades, more trades. One more auto. There's, a There's a kill angle in 28 seconds when I have ignite, but until then, I don't have a kill angle. Fake zoning. Okay. I have a kill angle in 15. I need to play patient. W for Teemo. Stop this base. Beautiful. So as you can see, I'm not overzealous to try to stop his base or anything. I'm just letting him do whatever. It's no big deal. There it is. I knew he would flash. That's why I flashed to the left. That is very classic for Aatrox players to do. And now we just hard shove. Find me a path. Right now, Teemo can kill us. So if you want, you can just base there. That is a play in that scenario. But I'm going to be greedy, and it pays off because Teemo is mid lane. An enemy has been slain. So I'm going to get that minion, shove here. I'm going to place my super secret pink ward. Uh-oh. Let me go, let me go. Please! Oh shit. What?! I should have ran towards my tower. Uh, that's sad, ladies and gentlemen. But it's okay. 
I should have, after the juke, I should have immediately just hard cut towards my tower. I, I would have lived. It's okay, I don't need the backseat. I know my mistakes. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Straight to the face. Let's wait for a long sword here. Get some extra AD. And back on the map we go. Big top wave to cash, so let's go run top and cash the wave. There's not really a play mid from the looks of it, or bot lane, because bot lane just died. There can be a play here, but I don't want to be there. Because by the time I get there, it'll be gone. So we are catching the wave. So, when T when Quinn gets Tiamat, you shove very, very quickly. So a little piece of advice is you can Tiamat mid-E. So when you, when you almost reach your opponent, pop the Tiamat, because that's where the heart of the battle is. Or the heart of where you're uh, probably trying to do damage. Probably an angle here to take plates instead of rotating mid. So I'm gonna take a plate here. And I'll pop ult literally right in front of the tower, don't care. And we're gonna run mid or something. Pop my W real quick. Try to dodge shrooms. Don't go into like middle middle areas. And let's see if there's anything here for us. Oh that's a misplay. There's nothing here. Nothing wrong with that. Rotate back top. Aatrox is hard shoving the wave. We want to get back to to catch the wave. So we made a timer there. Ah, that's, that's gone. We used our timer there to rotate to mid lane, but there was no play. I see. We're stacking it. It's okay. No problem. Gonna hard shove the wave here and then rotate mid again. That's the name of the game for Quinn, baby. Don't forget that. Okay. We're rotating out. See if there's something mid lane here. Yep, there's something mid. Sindra? He was pushing mid, he didn't even know. That's the awareness of this elo. It's all good. Nothing wrong with that. Profane Hydra. And as you can see, the Empowered Recall, kind of OP, slain. not gonna lie. An enemy has been slain. But to the top lane we go. Eyes in the sky. Oh, I can't kill that guy. He's full HP. No! He's too fed. Damn. The Eclipse really got me by surprise there. I didn't pay attention. The extra shielding screwed me over. But no problem. The plan never changes when you play Quinn. You could be inting or whatever, but... You always go by the fundamentals of... Finding numbers advantage fights. In this scenario, I was in a numbers advantage. That was a 1v1. Alright, I think we play bot lane here. So, right here, screw top lane, straight bot lane. That's the Quinn gameplay, baby. As they should be able to get him here. He jumped over them. No way. Where'd Lulu go? Yep, that's good. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, that's good. No, they're all 1 HP. It's okay. Okay, let's take a base. Empowered recall, and then back on the map we go. But if you see the stuff like that happening bot lane is what you want to look for. Obviously, Kha'Zix misplayed it by jumping over them with the Blast Plant. So then they had a way out, but... You want to create numbers advantage like that. 3v2 in that scenario. This is probably a 2v1. 
gonna help me or what? Quinn, baby, that's Quinn. You just keep doing that over and over again. Out top lane here to so catch our wave and then we're gonna rotate again and look for those plays again nothing changes i'm just repeating that process over and over again i do want to take a second to grab the plant though that's gonna be nice no, 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 no. okay now we rotate again and look for a play you don't really push out top all the way which is what most people would do nothing here Maybe there might be something in the jungle. We've got this covered. Yup, yup, yup. There you go. That's the gameplay right there. Set up, set up, set up, boys. Prop, prop the Profane Hydra mid jump. There you go. Numbers advantage right there, as you can see. We had five mid, they had one inside, one in top. And now we base and catch the wave with our empowered boots. An enemy has been slain. Let's go see if I can kill Echo. Demacia is counting on us. Cause Timo isn't pushing top, but Echo's still pushing bot. So I do want to catch him out here. Your turret has been destroyed. Catch this guy. What do you see? Yeah, I'm gonna back off. This is all uh, time for my teammates instead of suiciding into him again. <laughs> He was trying to blow me up there, so that's why I backed off one step. But let's head top lane now and see if we can maybe deal with this team. I'm not sure. Oh, it's so sad. Damn, I'm lucky. Stealing all the glory. It's all good! Nothing changes, keep doing the same thing. Uh, there's nothing mid lane, our Jin's dead, so I'm just gonna push top here. So, we're gonna take a second to farm. Something that, ugh, farming on Quinn. Yikes. There's a Lucian behind us. I got exhausted, I'm lucky. It's all good. Lucian exhaust! Once we respawn, our objective here is to do the same thing. Probably on Echo. That guy's kind of running it down, not gonna lie. Keep building a, a lead through Syndra and through their Echo. This guy says stop running around like monkeys, but that's literally my champion. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a red sweeper. And if, uh, I don't want to replace this pink ward. This pink ward has too much sentimental value. Your turret has been destroyed. Nice. Straight to the bot lane we go. Let's look for Echo. Ooh, catch this guy. Sometimes I swear that bird is Nice, good damage. Alright, nothing's going on. I guess we're pushing out waves. This is boring. You want to keep looking for stuff like that. But if nothing happens, I guess we push out waves. We'll push out top lane and force Aatrox to respond to the wave, which is a classic play. Once he responds to the wave, I'll have numbers advantage moving into the mid lane play. So right here we're gonna shove. And this should automatically force Aatrox back top lane. With Aatrox running top lane, I'm gonna run mid lane. He should be there right now. There he is. 
And now we're gonna look for a place somewhere here. Team much room, unlucky. This is probably one of the worst champs I could run into while playing Quinn. Because you want to run around, but there's just random team mushrooms on the map. Find me a path. There it is. Oh, we just do bear. Alright, to the brand we go. My teammates found the pick. I wasn't even involved. Teemo shoot, really. Base and back on the map we go. He's running it down. Alright, the enemy team's trolling, but that's okay. And back on the map we go to chase down this Lucian. We got this covered. And since you're alone, there's no play, so it's very important here that you don't try to gank anyone. You just push waves. As you can see, they're all dead. So I'll just catch the waves here. There's this room right there. I'm gonna take Jin CS because I don't like him, and then rotate top and catch the top wave. So I'm basically double farming. Buy me some time. Again, profane Hydra. When you're about to hit your target with your E, top wave is pushed out. Rotate over to mid lane. Honestly, gonna get the spruce plant though. We need mana, so here we are. Mana, and then to the mid lane we go. Atrox is catching top lane as you can see, so there's numbers advantage over here. So I'm rotating in to see what we can find. I have to flash over that wall. Fine. Big bait, massive bait, massive bait, massive bait. Atrox coming from this side. And that's what you do. Atrox just wanted to top lane. And his mid lane got punished. Let's grab an Edge of Night for this Teemo. He's been a problem with his shroom. And with their numbers advantage, they're now clearing mid and we continue pushing, I guess. Good luck, guys. You guys have numbers advantage. So yeah, basically to sum up this game. Early game, three wave crash on your opponents, poke them early on. Use bushes to reset minion aggression. Three wave, and then crash tower dive. Pop your ignite when you're tower diving. And then you base. Come back with items, play passively, and try to shave down the wave to freeze in front of a tower, if not let it crash. And then once you reach six, you either force roam if you die solo, or if you can kill your opponents. And you just repeat that process. Come back to catch the wave, and then rotate again, and for more roams. And then that's all I did throughout the entire game. While it's also while it's important to like run around with high tempo and intensity, you have to be able to identify when you just have to catch waves. So keep that in mind guys. Sometimes you do have to take a step back and just farm for a little bit. But for the most part, as you can see, I didn't do anything crazy. You could also argue sure I got carried by my teammates here. But there were a lot of like roam plays that Influenced the direction of this game. What are they saying? <laughs> As you can see, the Echo got mad, is getting mad right now, flaming everyone because uh, he got camped by not only our jungler but by me too. I also ganked his lane. Okay. Right here, there should be an Echo somewhere around here. Nope, he's in base. Profane Hydra as he jump in. And with the introduction of Profane Hydra, your ability to push on Quinn is really strong. Okay, let's rotate over, see what we do here. I stepped on a shroom, God bless my edge knight. Ha ha ha! 
That is Quinn right there. Ladies and gentlemen, that is cool win at its finest. Alright, that's on the game. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys drop a like, hit the sub button, and have a fantastic rest of your day. My timing was off there.